Nigerians, just about yesterday, some military chiefs were seen leaving Asorok after having a meeting with Tinubu. Good morning. <laughs> you need to know what they are planning if you can watch this video to the end and help me share it. <laughs> Yo, welcome back again. This is BVI Channel 1 where we tell you undiluted truth. As the panic is spreading across Africa with respect to military takeovers of different countries, Nigeria, the dragon head of impunity and corruption among political class, are not left out as the man in Asorok occupying the presidential seat is making every move to consolidate power. We saw them leave Asorok after having a crucial meeting with the president in occupation. Yeah, yesterday, Tinebu was um, seen having a closed door meeting with security chiefs at the state house in Abuja. After the pleasantry we are watching, which we know is not going to be different from the normal Bulaba Bala Blue, as we've always had it from Tinubu. Ah. <laughs> the meeting ended as it was shredded in secrecy the media wasn't allowed in but from the language of the body language of the participant of the meeting one can tell there was an agreement agreement to um should any eventuality happen after the court judgment? Because that is necessarily why this meeting was called. Because if that is not so, these men that came to Asorok would be very busy engaging Boko Haram, bandits, and other insecurity issues across Nigeria. But for the fact that the Judgment has been fixed for tomorrow, being 6th of September. They must be called upon, and immediately after this meeting, Tinubu left Nigeria. Good. Now, so many people are wondering, and so many people have come up with the conclusion that it is because a set date had been put aside for the judgment of the tribunal of the election, the presidential election. And he's making sure that every loose end is tightened. That is exactly what is being gazetted. They use INEC to rig the election, preparing to use the judiciary to, to affirm the impunity of that election, and now using security chiefs to threaten and cow Nigerians to submission, never to raise their heads in protest. That had been what the atmosphere is saying. Because the tension out there is so thick that anyone can feel it. It's so glaring that even the blind can see. And the echoes loud so much that even the deaf can hear. Nigeria is at the boiling point. And tomorrow is a decisive day. We heard that the military chief, GOC commanding, telling military personnel that anyone that is not loyal to Tinibu should leave the army, should leave the military. You can imagine that nonsense. Yesterday, we were told that the GOC 81D of, uh, of the Nigerian uh, army you know, was telling the troops that anybody who is not loyal to President Tinubu should just leave the uh, armed forces 
and that they must show loyalty, discipline, professionalism, fine. Good talk. I want to remind the military, the military chiefs, that their loyalty is not to Tinubu, but rather to the constitution of Nigeria. To defend the constitution of Nigeria. We expect the military to defend the Nigerian constitution and not a single individual who have flouted the constitution because it is in black and white the provision of the constitution talking about the 25 percent of abuja we are no longer talking about every other thing his um qualifications his um background his whatever no we are not even talking about the intimidations that happened the electoral malpractices when we are talking about the result of the election that stated clearly that Tinubu and Atiku did not have 25% needed to be sworn in as the president of Nigeria. Tomorrow's election is in their hand. Far more important is the provision of section 134, subsection 2B of the, of the current of the constitution. It is to say, it to the fact that no presidential candidate can be declared a winner in this election without having 25 percent in the federal capital territory that is very important for the whole world to know that tomorrow's election wherever the, the, the to be finally declared apart from having 25 percent in 24 states of the federal republic of nigeria the federal capital territory is like a compulsory question you can answer all that question but federal capital territory Without having 25%, you go nowhere. Yes. First, you have the highest number of votes. Mm -hmm. Again, not the majority, because sometimes people confuse that. Majority means over 50%. Highest means even if you, you win by it one vote. It has to be 50%. Yes, it can be one vote yes. ahead. So yeah. the highest number of votes, that's the first condition. The second condition is that you must win 25% votes In 24 across states. two thirds of two -thirds Nigeria's of states, 36 yes. states, which is 24 states, mm -hmm. plus. This FCT is an win. and FCT. You must so win FCT. You must win at least 25% in FCT. Okay. So even if you win those 24 states, you have 25%, but mm -hmm. you don't get 25% in FCT, there's a problem. The Abadorians and the Batified Fellows in Nigeria may argue that these guys are not speaking from the Lego luminary perspective. Let us listen to one the former Attorney General of the Federation, Michael Anduaka, on this matter. The Constitution is a document, and for you to get the true intention of a particular provision of the Constitution, for instance, Section 134, Subsection 2, you have to read the entire Constitution in reference to other provisions of the Constitution. That's where you will get the true meaning. Today, I don't want to specifically talk about Section 134, Subsection 2, but to give you other background provisions that if you want to construe that provision, you must also have to look at them to give you what you are looking for. First, let's look at the Constitution itself, Section 1 uh, and 2. And Section 1 said Nigeria should be a federation consisting of the state and the federal capital. That is the beginning. Should be a federation consisting of states and federal capital. That and appeared there. Then if you go back to section 133B of the constitution, which deals with presidential election, which comes before section 134, you will see that a person who is a single candidate at the election is still stipulated to win 25% into tens of all the states and federal capital. Okay, now listen to him in another separate interview where he nailed this matter to the cross once and for all. The matter has been interpreted before around 2008 in a matter involving the current president, Buhari, when he filed an action. The issue of whether that uh, and in between that is, must have 25% uh, in two states and the federal capital territory. 
I think the pronouncement then was that the and is conjunctively. That was the interpretation then. The interpretation was that that and federal capital should be construed conjunctively. In other words, it means you must get the 24, the two days, the 25 percent in two days, and also you must get 25 percent in the federal capital territory. If you go by the interpretation of the Supreme Court in 2008, we are all waiting for the judiciary to make this interpretation, and the date has been fixed for the 6th of September. Afterwards, let's hope that Nigerians who have the ultimate power will defend their constitution. And those who have the constitutional requirement and obligation to defend it, the military, will not be used against the people. Let's just hope that is the case. We are not intimidating the judges to give a favorable decision to a section of people, but we are asking the judges to interpret the law the way it is. Watch my next video. Respect to what Justice Orderly said. You need to share that video and you need every Nigerian to watch it. I'm an advocate for good governance. Help me spread this message and remind the military their constitutional role. We are watching and the world is also watching. And before I conclude, I want to show this and remind the Nigerian army and the security apparatus about what happened in Sri Lanka. Good. You see that? There are 200 million Nigerians that are hungry, that are angry because of the situation of this country. I wonder if you can stop it if they rise to this point. You can stop that if you do the right thing by making sure that not few individuals throw the entire country into a situation of sorry state. Bye-bye for now. Help me share this video, people. And don't forget to drop your comment. Subscribe for more videos.